Hello everyone, this is Brandon John and I'm the engineering training manager here at gdntbasics.com. We have partnered with Mitatoyo to create a series of videos to show you how parts get set up and how they get inspected. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the part setup, the creation of the datum reference frame, and datum qualifying. Today we are here with Javier Vaquez, who is an application engineer at Mitatoyo, and we're at their showroom located in Huntersville, which is just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. This place is stockpiled with all sorts of metrology equipment, and they have a training center here as well. This inspection will take place on the Krista Apex S series programmable CMM. Let's start off by taking a look at our drawing. This is a drawing of the gold block that Mitatoya has designed for use as a training aid. At this point, we only have the datum feature shown on the drawing, and we've done this so that our focus is on the datum features only. Let's zoom in here so that we can get a better look at these datum features along with their respective datum qualifiers. Javier will start off by creating datum A and qualifying datum feature A. The reason that he is starting here is not simply because of alphabetical order. Looking at the drawing, we can see that it is the primary datum. The ASME Y14.5 standard states that we do not have to label our datums in alphabetical order, but we highly recommend that you do. But how did Javier know that he needed to set up datum A first? Well, the datum reference frames contained within the feature control frames that are qualifying datum features B and C dictate that. Note that the perpendicularity requirement for datum feature B is referenced back to A, and in that datum reference frame, the primary datum is A. Now take a look at the position requirement for C. The primary datum in this DRF, or datum reference frame, is also datum A. And then the secondary one in that DRF is datum B. Going back and taking a look at datum feature A, we see that it has a qualifier on it. This qualifier is surface flatness, which is a form control. Generally speaking, we can only use form controls to qualify a primary datum, and this is because just like a primary datum, form controls cannot be related back to any other features on a part. Remember from our course and from our GDNT wall chart, no datum references are allowed when it comes to form controls. Okay, let's move over to the CMM now and watch Javier run the inspection process for flatness on datum feature A. He already has the head rotated so that the probe can reach under the part. He starts probing a bunch of points along X about halfway across the part and then moves in a certain distance in Y. The intent here is to capture a large sampling of points and the number of points required will be determined by him. The ASME Y14.5 standard does not dictate in any way the number of points to take for this measurement or any other measurements. They leave that up to experienced individuals like Javier. He's now collecting points from the right side of the part. Once this is complete, the software will take the three highest points and it will create a datum plane, which is a perfect plane. Note that he utilized a thread on the bottom of the part to mount this on top of a post. This gave him the ability to get under the part in order to be able to do the probing. With the flatness inspection now complete, the software is already putting together our measurement report. We see the flatness symbol on there in the first row, and over on the right, we see the tolerance that Javier entered into the software, which was 100 microns. If you look at the deviation on there, it shows that we came in a little over 8 microns. This is well within our tolerance limits, and we can now move on to inspect for datum feature B. Let's take a look at datum feature B on the drawing. We see the datum symbol attached directly above a feature control frame that contains perpendicularity. This is the qualifier for this datum feature. If you were to look this up in the standard, uh, it would not be listed as datum qualification or qualifying, 
they refer to it as datum feature control. In the industry though, we call this datum qualification. We see the tolerance zone is 100 microns and it's in reference back to datum feature A. Uh, but recall or remember, we're not going to measure against datum feature A. We're going to measure against the datum feature simulator. Uh, in the standard, it states that as being the theoretical datum. This means it's perfect. In our inspection for datum feature A, the flatness requirement, when we probed that, the software took the highest points from that surface and constructed a perfect plane or that, uh, that datum feature simulator. So now that's stored in memory. And anytime we reference A now, um, these references will go back to this theoretical datum plane. So in this case here, in this feature control frame, it is referencing A. We will be qualifying this back to A. So our tolerance zone, two parallel planes, spaced apart, 100 microns. And as Javier runs through the inspection on here, uh, any probe point that we take off of this must be within those two parallel planes. And when it's all said and done, and this is, this is complete, the CMM software will construct another plane, another datum plane, which is theoretical. And based off the high points, it will now be perfectly perpendicular to A. So the software is going to set that up for us. So we don't have to worry about the error on this surface. It has to be within tolerance. But no matter what from this, we are going to get a perfect plane that is perfectly perpendicular to A. Let's take a look at what this looks like on the CMM. So there are obstacles here that Javier has to avoid, like counterbores and slots and whatnot all of the radii around the part. Uh, if he did accidentally probe one of those, he would get an error. But he has managed to avoid every one of them here. And remember that the number of points taken is up to metrology. So no matter what though, it's going to ensure based off of the number of points that when it passes, we do have a good part. As I stated before, the software is building this measurement report in the background as we go. So each time we take an inspection, the measurement report pops up. And we see on this one here, uh, the symbol for perpendicularity has been added to the report. The tolerance is 100 microns. And Javier entered that in. And then we see the result of 22 microns, um, slightly over there. So again, well within our tolerance requirement here. So we have a good passing datum feature. This means that we can now go on to inspect datum feature C. Let's take a look at datum feature C. We do see here that the datum symbol is attached to a feature control frame. It is a position tolerance. Uh, it is cylindrical, this tolerance zone. It's cylindrical, we see the diameter symbol there. The size of that cylinder is 254 microns. Now this will be parallel to A because A is the primary datum. So this tolerance zone will be set parallel to A and this is the theoretical datum, right? We're not measuring from datum features. So it will be parallel to datum plane A, also located up a certain distance up there from A. And then we look at B, the plane from B, what this is doing here in the feature control frame is uh, establishing perpendicularity. So it's perpendicular to B. Now because um, this is qualifying our tertiary datum, we don't need at this point any uh, X values or anything from side to side. And we're not showing all of these basic dimensions on here, but uh, in the background, Javier is pulling these basic dimensions from the 3D model. So the tolerance zone here, whenever Javier probes the front, he's going, to, he's going to move so far into the bore and then take so many probe points around a circle and then step in, repeat, and he'll do that in certain increments all the way uh, until he gets to that through bore coming from the top that you see in section AA. Once he reaches that point, he'll back out 
he'll move to the opposite side. He'll re-engage this bore and repeat the process. When it's done, he will get a cylinder and from this, it will, it, the software will extract an axis and then it will compare that axis to the tolerance zone and make sure that it, it does stay inside of that cylindrical tolerance zone. At this point, Javier has already defined where the cylindrical tolerance zone goes in reference to datum A with the basic dimension. And it is oriented perfectly to A and B. So as he takes these probe points and constructs this cylinder, like I said, he does have to go to the backside to complete it so that we have a cylinder going all the way through the feature. But once we get that cylinder probed, then an axis will be formed from that cylinder and that axis will be compared to the tolerance zone to make sure that it is within the cylindrical tolerance zone. There's not too much tilt um, or location error from A up to it. Once that's been validated, then we have a good datum feature. And the basic dimension that Javier used to locate that position tolerance is already establishing where that perfect datum axis goes. The measurement report pops up immediately and we can look at the diameter in the two highlighted rows there. The first one's diameter and we see on that one we had a nominal of 12 millimeters plus or minus 254 microns and the actual size came in at 11.963 and our deviation then from nominal was 36 microns. So we came in a little undersized, but well within our tolerance. So we have good size there. The next row down is the position report. On that one, we had a tolerance of 254. Remember it's diameter. So it's a, a diametric tolerance zone, cylinder on, on our report. And we see we came in at a diameter of 216. Now that's total deviation. So we are within tolerance. Um, again, we had 254, we came in at 216. So we have a good passing part. This means that all three datum features passed their requirement or passed their qualification requirement. So this means we have a good part and now we can move on to our other inspections. And we'll do that. We'll start that in our next video. So I appreciate everybody joining. And I do hope that you'll please join us in the next video where we will start to inspect all of the features on this part. Our intent is to cover uh, as many geometric tolerances as we can, the inspection of those on this part. Once we've uh, completed the number of inspections we can do with this one, Mitotoyo has other ones for us. We will move on to those and uh, we'll do the datum setups and the inspections for those as well. Take care and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.